Hey everyone, welcome to um, me explaining what we have in store for the spring 2020 uh, semester. Uh, I think many people have been inquiring through emails, have also been asking, hey, what are we gonna have brick and mortar classes? Um, are they going to run? What's the deal? When's the registration opening? And uh, it took us a little time. I mean, we, we have a lot of cool stuff planned. So for those of you who are concerned, no need to be, this is gonna be an amazing semester. Um, kind of a, uh, under the, some strange circumstances, obviously, and I hope all of you guys are healthy and, and everything's going well out there. Try to keep your wits together. It's really a, an interesting time, I have to say. I've uh, been through many of them. Um, nothing quite like this one, but, but a number of other ones that have been highly challenging. So what it usually does with me is it helps me to, well, it makes me to be more creative with um, how I do what I do, you know, which is uh, our school. And a number of years ago, we, as many of you know, we have an online program and we have a brick and mortar program. And I always saw a need for some bridge between those two entities. Uh, one being a very solitary style of training, which most training is quite that way, as many of you know. And the other one where you're actually in an environment with a lot of interaction with teachers and other students. And it's a, you know addictive kind of area to be because it's very fun. I mean, there's a lot of like interaction and stuff. So there's nothing quite like that. But what we did do a number of years ago is we created a streaming program, which we've kept kind of on the down low with our, with our, between the other two, uh, because we just really wanted it to organically grow and see how to experiment with presenting the information so that it would be as if you were in the classroom. So we did live streaming for a number of about last year, two years. And we worked on the infrastructure of it along with the, uh, uh, with the online, because it was really intended to actually accompany the online and allow the online students to feel as though they were part of the community of the Watts community. And what we found is that it did work extremely well. We just had a number of our teachers experimenting with it. We didn't have everybody on board with it. We were just kind of playing around with it. So when it came time now to determine whether we are even going to be able to hold uh, brick and mortar classes, it, it, we may not be able to, right, um, with the state of what's going on. And I know a lot of schools are addressing this, but I don't think many of them have the infrastructure that we had put in place. So I'm very thankful that I can offer you um, this really amazing opportunity to study with us from the convenience of your living room, your garage, uh, wherever it is that you can set up a little studio space. And it'll be getting, okay, getting critiques. It's going to be uh, watching the video, the demos from the best possible place, which is right over our heads. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a good three quarters of our classes and we're repurposing them for streaming this next term. Now, normally we'd call it live streaming, but we're just going to do it as streaming because it's too logistically difficult to shoot seven classes on a Monday with about a 15 minute break in between each one, depending on how long the demos are gonna be. Because certain classes will have three hour demos the first week. Some classes will maybe have more of an hour demo, depending on the structure of the class and which class it is. Painting classes are slightly different than drawing classes. Fundamental drawing classes are different than a long graphite drawing class, for example. So we're gonna customize each one of the classes. It's gonna be awesome, as you know we always do. We always do incredibly high quality uh, content and stuff, and it's not going to change. It's actually going to be probably in some ways even more conducive than being at the brick and mortar. And the reason being is that here's how it goes. For example, um, you're taking a head class and it's slotted that we're going to go upload that um, demo on Monday at 10 o'clock. Well, you can go and watch that demo the whole term as many times as you want and up to two weeks after the term's over. If you were in a class with me and you were watching me do that demo live, you can't shoot video, right? You can just witness it. So you're getting to remember only what you can remember from watching that 25 minute demo or three hour demo, which is gonna be very little, even if you had a, well, maybe if you had an identic memory or something, but online, you can watch me stop it, watch me do an eye, watch, go back, watch me lay this part in, that part in. And what an amazing resource just right there is the compounding of the amount of retention that can occur by being able to watch it whenever, as many times as you want. The other caveat is normally when you're in class, the instructor will come by after the demo and work with each individual person in the class. And if you have a 15 person class in a three hour chunk of time, minus the demos and the warm ups, maybe 15 minutes per person if you're really on point and really know what you're doing as a teacher, which we do. And it's great. Um, and for, you know, it, it's a real good value to what what is going on. but. On the online, what you're going to get is you're going to watch us do the demo. We're going to send you the reference. You're going to print it out or watch it on your screen or whatever, and you're going to execute a drawing or a painting or whatever it is we have you structured to do for that week. You're then going to send it back to the instructor. 
The instructor is then going to do a layover. Some will do digital layovers. Some might do, like I would do very traditional layovers. Maybe a vellum paint over over the top of your painting or an extremely in-depth um, critique of what I like, don't, you know, what could be changed, what could be better, what could be, how you could maneuver. Um, so it's very personalized and it's probably going to be about 10 to 15 minutes per student. And we are capping these classes at 15 people. So at this point. With 15 people, you will be able to see all of those 15 demo uh, critiques if you want. They'll be uploaded to the point where you can view each one of them. If you were in the class, you would get your critique and then you'd go back to your painting. And then as the teacher was critiquing the other people, you, wouldn't really, you might be hearing a little bit of it out of your peripheral, but you wouldn't be able to sit and watch it and see what was being taught on that person's painting, which could be very, very helpful for you. So that's another layer that's, in my opinion, maybe even more efficient and effective than the brick and mortar. Okay, so there's two things that are easily as good, if not maybe even slightly better. Um, on top of that, we will basically be um, interacting on, on – the teachers can answer certain questions that you have as they're doing the critique for you and things like that. We used to do that live action when we were actually going through it, but it's uh, – we're not going to be doing it live this time. So it'll be more um, uploaded. The teachers will film it, upload it, and each class will be dissected and redesigned according to, to the structure of it. So I'm absolutely excited about fleshing out the online streaming program, which I always wanted to do, and we were slotted to try to do it this summer. And uh, as, as you know, circumstances would have it, we had to fast forward that a little bit, and now we're going to do it all uh, right now. And so we're really well prepared. I don't think you have to worry too much at all about, or at, if at all, about it's going to be a good experience and quality. The only caveat is you're going to be in your room and have to do it that way. But we all have to be in our rooms right now anyway. You know, we're all quarantined, right? So we might as well learn, grow together, inspire. This is a beautiful thing about the techno technological age in which we, we live is that we can bring these things to you. And it's a godsend, really. I mean, it's amazing. And so my intention is to bring you the highest quality, highest caliber instruction that's out there, um, bar none, and do it with, with some grace, panache, joy, um, jovial aspects, but also just very poignant and use our 25, 26 years of experience building one of the most unique curriculums I know and one of the most well-polished um, with teachers that are all 15 plus years. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, all those things said, we're probably some of the best teachers I've ever seen at communicating verbally, intellectually, philosophically, while executing it at a ridiculously high level. There's going to be no scripting over the top of it no talking over the top of the painting. It's all live action. You're going to get to see the mistakes. You're going to see us fix the mistakes. It's just like being in the room with us, just like being in the classroom with us. So I love you guys. Hope to see you. And we will be going live with our um, with the actual registration opening on April 2nd. So uh, get ready. Get in there. And uh, we'll see what we can do to get you in the classes you want. And then we will follow through and create an amazing 10-week term for you. You're going to come out of it with a lot of good stuff. Cheers softer edge along that sort of zygomate cheek area there. But then underneath it, a harder edge. And usually it's that transition of hard and soft edges that's really going to get form to roll. And then this is a little cast shadow coming off of the either the hat or the eye socket. Difficult to tell for sure. So that's going to be a harder edge. And then we come down to this rolling of this very fleshy area through the front of the cheek. And then a little gap. And then we've got this half tone uh, with the vastus lateralis. Uh, the vastus lateralis is actually a, a deeper lying muscle that these other two processes are going to wrap around and hook up and encompass uh, to a degree. But it bulges out here in the front and it connects down to the patella. So we get a little bit of the patella poking out right there. The vastus lateralis is just this very large, almost uh, spherical, kind of egg-shaped muscle that lies underneath there. And if you see a horse uh, kind of standing in a neutral pose, but 
uh, you know, if you get if it gets flies that land on its haunches, it kind of flexes all of its uh, all of its hindquarters. You see this bulge out right above that uh, that kneecap quite uh, quite prominently. I'm just going to go ahead and throw a little core shadow on there. Show you guys how that muscle's working. And then, like I said, what we're going to have happening now is with that vast. So again, line. remember we're thinking just really clearly separating things down to soft edges, uh, maybe even really soft edges, like that, or maybe a little more firm, maybe even more firm than that. You know, so depending on what type of edge we choose, all the way down to boom, like something like that, you know, we're going to create different effects. So I'm going to come in and start thinking about how rounded an object is or how squared off it is. The shoulder is more round, or yeah, more rounded along here. So we're going to have a softer edge and then a little harder edge underneath here. Kind of like that. Or we have the shoulder coming and kind of wedging up against the tricep. You know, then up in here, we're going to have a little soft edge. Maybe even a firm edge. And then it's going to soften up a lot, right? Because we're moving into this part of the scapula. Take a second to just look at your drawing sometime. Look at it. Just look at it objectively. Just look at it and say, does that look right to me? Does that look like you know, in the range of that person's head size. You know, okay, maybe you might not be able to judge it down to the, you know, two percentile or something, but you can get it in the ballpark. Without measuring, just look at it. Just look. Give it the eyeball test. Best tool you have. Just look at it. Does it look right? I also feel like the head should be, the overall head size is pretty good, I think. I'm going to check it. It might be a little bit big. I'm going to check. But I think it's pretty good. I mean, it's certainly not that far right. off. Now, I'm going to hit a little hard edge underneath now, because remember, we have the volume of this to this, this to this to this to that, right? Topographically happening there. So harder underneath little softer along the eyelashes, maybe a little bit of wet spot there that just kind of shows that this little notch sometimes you'll get on the lower lid that I used to, I think I remember who I used to see do that a lot. It's one of the, somebody in my class that, I think it was Andrew, um, that I used to love watching him notch that a little, a little wet spot or something on the lower lid or something it made it look like. Okay, I'm gonna link that back around, come here. Look at how this wraps around there and how the lid, comes like that and then the tear duct it's going to be in there a little cast shadow and the thickness of the lashes again I don't want to draw them out